as you can see, we have a, a network connection. It's gone out to a site on the internet, so we're verifying that that's working. So at that point, you can go ahead and double click the install button, and I'll do that now. And it'll begin an installation process. This is really very straightforward. There are just a few choices that you'll have to make along the way. Uh, so as soon as we get that going, I will show you what those are. So you can read this screen here. Uh, again, make sure the language that you want to use is selected. Um, click forward, and it'll bring us to the next screen. You need to select your time zone. I happen to be in Arizona, so I'm going to select Phoenix. Um, you need to select your time zone. And go ahead and go to the next screen. Um, uh, you need to select your keyboard. The, the odds are that you have a, a USA keyboard, but as you can see, there are alternate keyboards that you can select. So if you have something other than a standard US keyboard, um, now is the place to select it. Next step is going to set up a partitioner. This might appear to be a little bit scary because it's going to talk about partitioning and formatting and erasing your hard drive, but remember that this is actually not doing anything at all to your hard drive. The file that the virtual um, VMware server creates looks to this program like a hard drive, but you're not actually doing anything at all to your hard drive, so this is perfectly safe. Uh, we'll go ahead and start up the partitioner. And you want to use guided uh, partitioning. Uh, there's no reason to do a manual partition um, uh, in uh, uh, a virtualization uh, VMware server. And it takes, uh, it takes a few minutes to get that uh, uh, partitioner started. Now all you need to do is enter your name. Um, and I'll enter something here. And it'll choose your uh, login name. You can, um, uh, you know, Choose whatever you like for that. Choose a password. Um, and now choose the name of the machine. Um, default is Linux desktop. I'm going to say um, Ubuntu 804 desktop. That's what I'm going to call mine. Uh, and so then the only thing I, I recommend you do, because it is kind of hard to recover these if you lose them, so when you, when you get your username and your password, uh, go ahead and write it down someplace so you, you have it for safekeeping. And then click Forward. And it'll confirm what you're going to do, and there, there, you can take a look at the Advanced tab if you want, but there's really nothing in there you have to do for this kind of installation. So just go ahead and click Install. Uh, and now it's actually going to go ahead and install the system. This takes a while, so I'm going to pause the recording while it just spins through its wheels. Uh, and I will come back to you uh, as soon as it's ready. Once the installation is complete, you'll see this screen. Now I should mention along the way that uh, when Ubuntu has um, not had any keyboard input or mouse input for a while, it goes into a screensaver mode, so the screen goes black. Uh, if that happens, just uh, make sure to click inside the uh, virtual window and press a key, you know, uh, any key will bring the screen back. So now that installation is complete, we're going to go ahead and restart, uh, and that will actually load um, uh, the installed version of Ubuntu uh, inside the virtual window. So we'll go ahead and click restart now. Um, we'll take out the CD when this is done. Uh, so the uh, live CD version will shut down, and the system will reboot uh, into the fully installed version. Uh, so I'm going to press the pause button once again, and we'll come back as the system reboots. And here's what Ubuntu looks like as it's booting up, uh, just so you get a glimpse at that. Um, when, it, when the reboot occurs, it, um, uh, you'll see a quick flash, um, uh, something about Grub bootloader, uh, and that's the bootloading process. Uh, and you can just watch that spin. So I'll press um, pause again here. And here we are at the login screen, and I hope you remember to write down your username and password. And it should look familiar. The screen that comes up will be the uh, will be the new Linux screen. It takes a few seconds. I'll press pause. And we're booted back up. So a couple of housekeeping details. First of all. 
um, we can um, uh, eject the disk. I just right clicked on it. That's that um, ISO image and we don't really need that anymore. Uh, so we can go ahead and just eject that. And uh, once we've ejected it, uh, after we shut down the system, uh, we can go back and edit properties uh, and reconnect the um, uh, physical CD. So if you want to use your CD with this uh, application, you can. So that's pretty much it. You should take some time to familiarize yourself with the system. Um, under Applications, um, you can see that you've got um, um, uh, you know, some standard applications, calculators is pretty much what you'd expect in a Windows or a Macintosh machine. Number of games are installed. Um, some open source uh, editing, um, uh, graphics editing software, internet connection, of course, the um, uh, Firefox web browser, um, um, Office, you've got the open office um, uh, word uh, processing, uh, spreadsheet presentation uh, applications. Uh, some sound and video won't play uh, um, MPGs, uh, MP3s by default, um, but there are some drivers you can get if you want to play some MP3 files. Uh, you can also add and remove programs here or applications. Um, it has a what they call a package installer, uh, and it'll load up a list of uh, packages here. Uh, take a second to see what's available. Uh, and so there are, um, uh, and you can reload that. I'll, I'll, I'll skip that for now, but it'll actually get a fresh list from the internet. Um, a few different kinds of applications. Supported applications uh, are the ones that are directly supported uh, by Ubuntu. All open source applications or any applications that are available under open source. And then all available applications includes them. Um, uh, some things that are proprietary, uh, like for example MP3 players and, and some of the other applications that are not uh, available as open source. Uh, and so you can simply browse through this list here um, and take a look and see the different kinds of packages that, um, that you want. Um, and uh, if you want to install it, um, uh, then you just, need to, um, you just need to click a button here. Let's find one. Suppose I wanted to install Emacs. Um, and apply the changes and then it will actually install the package for you. Uh, so we'll cancel out of that. Uh, system, a few things you should know about the preferences. Um, this is where you can adjust the uh, appearance, the screen saver, um, you know, mouse and, and keyboard uh, behavior, um, you know, mouse speed and so on. Uh, administration is where you can uh, manage some of the uh, uh, system resources. Um, GNOME is the, actually the name of the uh, name of the desktop here. Uh, so that's pretty much how the system runs. The icon for Firefox is up here. Uh, and then when you're ready to shut down, you can just hit quit and shut down. And I'll let that shut down and then show you how to reconnect that um, uh, CD and then that'll be the end of the video. So let me press pause while it shuts. Okay, the machine is shut down and you need to shut down the machine before you can close um, VMware server. So uh, keep that in mind. You, you can um, uh, pause it, um, which will preserve the state, which is kind of like uh, putting it into sleep mode or, or stop it altogether. Um, and incidentally, if you ever do have problems with it uh, while the virtual machine is up and running, uh, this icon here uh, will force a, um, uh, force a reset. So we'll go back here to edit virtual machine settings and go to the CD-ROM drive and go back to uh, use physical drive. And now this will allow you to um, uh, use your physical CD-ROM drive uh, within the virtual machine. And then of course um, to start with, and you can have any number of virtual machines up here. In fact, if you have enough memory, you can have several running at once. Uh, so after you've gone back and uh, checked physical drive, you can just click OK here and start it up. And that's pretty much how it works. Now I'm getting this message because I don't actually have a physical CD uh, uh, ROM drive attached to this particular machine. So uh, if you have a CD ROM, you won't get that message. Uh, and if you don't have a CD ROM, um, then you can choose to um, um, have it not try to connect um, uh, on startup as a default. So we'll just say, no, don't try to connect to the CD ROM drive. It'll say it's going to start disconnected. There's the uh, grub boot menu. Uh, and now it'll start up. So that concludes this lesson. We'll talk about some other features in other videos. Thanks for watching.